Well, good morning for Brunch with Brian. Today we have some special things we're going to talk about today. And today I'm wearing an interesting outfit. I wish baseball was taking place more. I was a baseball player. I played baseball growing up my whole life. I used to play baseball when I was a little kid. My grandpa was a huge baseball player. My grandpa always had dreams that I would be a baseball player, a professional baseball player. I was actually a pretty good ball player uh, growing up. I played baseball all my whole youth. And yes, I definitely uh, miss baseball this time of year. I actually, we live in Arizona here where there's a lot of spring training. And uh, the year that the Arizona Diamondbacks won the World Series, 2001, we were actually at a whole bunch of spring training games. The boys were young then and, and very into baseball. Dashiell uh, and I were really into baseball that year. We had huge parties at our house that year uh, and uh, massive celebrations. We had two huge TVs. We had like 50 people at the house. And uh, it was really an incredible year, the year we won the World Series. AZ, Diamondbacks, go, yeah. And we set records. We were the first team. We are the fastest expansion team to ever win the World Series, so that was really cool. And uh, I was always, but really in my heart, I was a Minnesota Twins fan. So uh, actually the Twins won the series in 87 and 91 with Kirby Puckett. Actually, I have a baseball over here with Kirby Puckett's signature on it. And uh, that was the one of the two years that they won 87 and 91 with Ken Herbeck and that. I really, I love baseball. And uh, baseball, when I was a baseball player, that was a role I took on. And I talk a lot about roles. And I wanted to talk about roles. Uh, and I wanted to talk about, I'm going to start using signs more, guys, on Brunch with Brian. So what are we doing, guys? Yes, we are on Brunch with Brian. Yay. So yes, I'm going to be using a lot more signs. I'm going to use a lot more signs with you guys. So Brunch with Brian. Yes, we are here. That was the best picture I could get that looks kind of like a baseball field. <laughs> Green grass and baseball, right? So brunch with Brian. Now we play a lot of different roles in our lives, don't we? Now, what kind of sports? Were you a sports player? What, what sports did you play? What role did you take on for your team? So maybe you were a coach. Maybe you were a coach of a team and that's a, that's a definite role. Now I've been a coach in my life. I coach the kids teams. I also coach the kids in life. You know, you're a kind of a coach to your kids, not just on the ball field or on the on the soccer field, also in life, aren't you? And you're a coach in a lot of different ways. So uh, now you take on a lot of different roles. So I talk about roles a lot. And uh, well, let's start with smiling. Hey, so we're all smiling. We're smiling. It feels so good to smile, doesn't it? Sometimes you forget to smile. Sometimes you're running, 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 and life is so uh, airy. Let's get moving. So you're running all around, and you forget to smile. So put a big smile on your face, everybody. <sighs> Feels so good. Everybody's smiling. We're all smiling. You guys are always participating, right? I am guessing 98% of the people on the call, on, on our br brunch with Brian, are smiling and also doing the deep breathing, right? Okay, so let's do our deep breathing. Three big deep breaths, ready, in. Big deep breath in and hold it, and. Let it out, and when you let it out, of course, you're letting out all your tension, any negativity or anything, just let it all out. Okay. Okay, one more in deep. Let me see you smiling while you're breathing. Hold it and let it all out. I gotta have a little sign that says deep breathing time. Okay, and one more deep one in. Deep in. Take a little more in. And 
let it all out. Now I almost forgot to tell you. So now we play. Now when I would put on my normal baseball uniform, like now I played baseball growing up as a kid, and we what did you have for a uniform then? Now we put on uniforms. Think of some of the roles that you play in your life now where you put on a uniform. Now, when we go out and uh, see a house, now we got a really good deal going. We have a very expensive million dollar plus luxury home deal that we're doing right now. And we had a showing on it yesterday where these people have 50,000 down. So we uh, went out on the showing yesterday and we have these cool shirts that have our logo on them. And they're blue shirts with a cool logo. And then we have these black uh, polo shirts too that are uniform so that when you put on that shirt, the blue one is a collared with a button down collar and I wear a tie with it when that doesn't. And uh, you know, it's a long sleeve shirt. And then the sports shirt, Dasha likes to wear the black sports shirt with uh, khakis, which looks good too. It's a little less dressy. Um, so he comes on the appointments, Dashiell's our son, 29 year old son who works in the business with us and has helped us in, uh, immeasurably over the years. Uh, and so we had these really good buyers. We met them out at the property. Then we had a long meeting with our sellers after that, because when they move, guess what? They need a place. So we talked about what they're going to need. And so it looks like these folks want to maybe move in in July. So this would be a really great deal. We worked out a very interesting deal. When this goes through, I'll tell you guys more about this deal. But when you get a luxury home seller in that price range, there's all kind of creative things that you can do with that. Okay, uh, now do we did our deep breathing? Now movement, you know I always like to do some kind of movement with you and we don't have to do massive movement. You know I always like to run around a little bit. So you have your little, having a little track in your house. So now you should be on your feet usually when we do our brunch with Brian. So if you're not on your feet, it's a good idea to get on your feet. Just always it's good to stand. You know you're, your phone now if you don't have an apple watch and uh it's you know it's nice it's kind of handy it stand up it tells you to breathe i like that feature it actually will remind you hey do some deep breathing and it'll do like a 30 second deep breathing with you that's a great thing you know i'm telling you to do the same thing but i'm not on your wrist so this thing will help remind you so that's what's nice about this it'll do you it'll tell you to do stuff and so let's do our little run around you know, guys, I've really been running at the park lately. So I've actually been running a lot and I've been running, I've been sprinting at the park. So I've really been getting my cardio up. I can pretty much run back and forth across the park, you know, two times. I can really get it going. It does not take that long to get your cardio going. So, uh, you know, just run a little bit, just run a little bit and you, you breathe hard a little bit you find that you can get your cardio up pretty fast, okay? So a little bit of exercise, and you know I always like to stretch out, just at least do shoulder rolls and neck roll. You know, uh, that's the easiest thing to do in terms of stretching, and probably has the biggest impact. If you want most value for least effort in terms of stretching, do a neck roll, neck roll and shoulder rolls it's where you hold the most tension and it's going to loosen you up the most you're going to get the most impact and you know you just got to feel it anyways just uh close your eyes a little bit feel where the tension is what are you trying to do get the pops and the pain out get the two p's out pops in the pain now if you don't have a lot of pops that's good it means you're kind of already a little bit stretched out but if you start going like this and it's going pop pip pop poke you know, then you know, you, you know, you're not that stretched out. So that just means stretch out a little bit more. Do this a couple times, three, four times a day, and you're going to minimize the pops and the pain. And after you do it, you shouldn't have pain doing it like again, immediately. So get the pops and the pain out. You'll feel a lot better. You'll be a lot looser, you know, find where it is in your neck. Where is that pop? Okay. Get it out. Now this is important guys. In terms of your roles, which is what I wanted to focus on today, um, I because I'm in a role. Now, you look at me, if you saw me walking down the street, you'd say, what's that guy doing? He looks like a baseball player or something. He, he's in a role. You know, he looks like he's in a role. He's in a baseball player gear. Okay, so guess what? 
um, we, I used to actually lead the drama ministry for our church. And uh, when I had the time back when, uh, before, before I started leading Ron Legrand's drama ministry. <laughs> so this was funny because uh, at our church, you know, we had a, we have a drama ministry where uh, every week, uh, well, you know, back when we used to uh, get together every Sunday, uh, we have a, a, a skit, you know, a, a drama every week, which, which would show, you know, demonstrate one of the points of the sermon. Uh, basically, uh, and we would have the theme a couple of weeks in advance or more, hopefully, and write a little skit and have somebody, one of the uh, participants in the drama ministry, come and do the skit. And so I'd write the skit, and usually I would be in the skit, and we had, you know, several volunteers who were pretty good, actually, actors uh, who would play the parts. This was really fun back when I was doing this, and I really enjoyed it. So I wrote one of the skits, and I was a baseball player in this skit. And uh, and I, this is the outfit I wore. So I, I bought this costume. I went out, bought this shirt, and bought the hat. And in the skit, I remember I was a baseball player and I got a bat and I was on stage and I pre-recorded what I was thinking. And I, I had the bat and I was like practicing and I was getting ready and I was taking batting practice. And, and then the first pitch came in and I swung and I missed. And then I had the pre-recording saying, oh, I'm, I'm I'll the next one, I'll get this. That, that was just, you know, I, I accidentally missed that one. And, and then I had, you know, some funny jokes going through you know, I feel good. I feel good. Oh, I think I, I think I pulled a groin muscle, you know, and there was some funny stuff, you know, I'm pretty humorous. I can write some pretty funny jokes. So these were all humor skits. I, I, you know, I was actually thinking for a little while of put, you know, putting these skits together and giving them to other churches to do because they were really funny and entertaining. And, you know, I thought other churches could use these skits because they were always about, you know, really good points about, being who God wants you to be and giving to others. And they were really neat, you know, little uh, three to four to five minute skits about, you know, doing better in the world and giving back and uh, doing God's will in the world. So really neat. But uh, so it was playing a role, right? I was playing the role of a baseball player um, with the costume uh, on stage to make a point. So that's the thing. We're always playing roles throughout the day. You're playing, you know, the role of a mother, the role of a father. Sometimes I am when Trinity is around, I'm playing the role of father to her. Uh, I'm a husband. I'm a real estate investor. Uh, sometimes I'm a writer. So, and you guys have all your roles that you play during the day. So here are some of the roles. Now, the problem is that sometimes we learn not positive, productive roles from our folks, you know, usually from our parents. So if you look at your parents, you know, if they're sort of not so happy sometimes, you know, sometimes they got non-adaptive or maladaptive roles. You want very adaptive roles. One of my roles was uh, the smart kid. You know, I was kind of pet. Now that can be an adaptive role because, uh, well, it kind of worked out with Ron Legrand. Okay, I was kind of the smart kid and the one who kind of figured things out and was, and so I was kind of the teacher's pet with Ron a little bit. I, I figured out what Ron was trying to teach me and I took it to the next level. And so Ron could see that and he appreciated that and, you know, it was very helpful. And so uh, that that's where it was an adaptive thing and that's why we're where we're at. And so you, being smart, that's an adaptive trait. So if you have a role that includes being smart, you know, you're a thinker brain, that, that can be adaptive. Now, actually, being a thinker brain can be non-adaptive in real estate investing. If you get too caught up in your own brain, uh, you can not take any action. And that's why Lynette's very good in real estate investing, because she's such an action taker that she gets into some good roles. Now, here's a role that you need in real estate. Okay, and guys, we talked about this at the Global Summit, and this is one of the most important roles you will ever play in real estate, and what's that role? Master Caller Me, okay? If you guys can see that, I should have printed it a little bigger, but Master Caller Me, that's a role that we all need, and you need to get into this role today, probably every day as a real estate investor. You gotta get on the phone, and you gotta look smart, and you gotta be good, and you gotta feel this role. This is confidence. And in fact, 
when you can say, I am master caller me right now, I am master caller me. And you heard us talking about this on the summit presentation, mastering the phone. When you can say that and feel it, that gives you that powerful confidence. And so when you can slip into that role, when I can say, I am a great baseball player, and then I can go out and play baseball and I can be a great baseball player. It starts in your mind. You know, these guys who walk up to the plate and face some, uh, you know, Randy Johnson and actually get a base hit off of Randy Johnson, some incredible pitcher, they got to walk up there with confidence or they're just going to get blown away in three pitches, strikeout. So somehow they have to say master hitter me, you know, when they're walking up and, the, and Randy Johnson has to say master pitcher me. So they're all taking on these roles. Now, obviously they've practiced and prepared for these roles. So how do you practice and prepare for master caller me? You watch videos, you, you uh, read the scripts and you gotta have the scripts right in front of you. That's part of master caller me. Guys, do I still have the script sitting in front of me? Um, not really, but I, I've learned it. Lynette doesn't really use the script as much anymore. We still kind of have the script sitting around. Uh, it's still kind of sitting around. I will tell you that. And sometimes, uh, yeah, it's still sitting around. I still actually do look at it. I will tell you that I still actually sometimes rely on it. So yes, you do need the script. And you guys, if you, if you don't pretty much have it memorized or if you didn't write it yourself, yeah, you probably still need the script to be master caller me. Now, guys, in life, you need some kind of roles to play. And sometimes if you feel yourself, and especially in these days, are you slipping into kind of depressed, mopey me because you're just stuck in the house and you can't take enough action? Well, here's a role that's very helpful to me. That's a role that I try to play a lot, you know, and I try when I'm feeling down, I will try to think of that role, industrious, grateful me. Now, I thought of a lot of different words as opposed to industrious because industrious is kind of a complicated word and you might not be able to access it emotionally. See, if this word doesn't act, doesn't work for you emotionally, it doesn't work. Okay, so the word has to work emotionally. If it gets caught too in your head, it doesn't work. If you have to think about it, it doesn't work. But this word works for me emotionally because I thought about it. You, If you say hardworking me, Hard working doesn't do it to me because there's a lot of people who work hard and don't really, they don't work right. Okay. And you can't say busy me for a while. I thought I was, I was uh, busy, grateful, busy me, but you know, there's a lot of people who are busy, but you're not really doing the right thing. Industrious means you are smart and resourceful and you're building industry. You're, you're doing something that is industrious. You're building up your industry of whatever that industry is. And you're doing things intelligent within your industry, which is real estate investing in most of our cases. So being industrious is a super positive thing. So industrious, grateful me and grateful. It's just too hard to sometimes that we, we take everything for granted and we all have great things in our life, great people in our life, you know, nice things in our life. And it's so easy, boy, you have a nice car The you know, two days after you buy a new car, all of a sudden, you know, well, maybe not two days, but two weeks, you know, you're starting to take that car for granted. It's not like you, you forgot you bought a new car. So uh, grateful, it's hard, it's easy to forget to be grateful for things. So industrious, grateful me really hits it for me. You guys pick it for you. Don't usually don't pick more than two adjectives to define a role for yourself because it starts to get too complicated. But, you know, I'm a little, I give you a little leeway on that one. Two adjectives is usually good. Sometimes you can just say one adjective. You can just say happy me. It's time for me to be happy me. But on that one, I usually like two. That's what I like there. I like fulfilled happy me. So fulfilled happy me, that's good. And that's a role that you should always access. But I'm telling you, so many of us have lost touch with that. So many of us have lost touch with happy me. We don't even know who happy me is anymore. Who's happy me? I don't know who happy me is. I, I lost happy me about two years ago or five years ago or when, I don't know. Or maybe just a couple of weeks ago through all this, through all everything we're all going through. Maybe I lost happy me just a little while ago. So let's try to find happy me guys. So find happy me, maybe find fulfilled happy me. Now, listen, here's the trick. Some of us will never feel that 
happy me because we're always on this track, running, running, chasing checklists, chasing to-do lists. Listen, you got to be able to say, hey, at some point I'm going to feel fulfilled. Okay, I, I can't always I can't always be putting the goalpost further and further out there. You're never going to finish your to-do list. I hate to break it to you. You're never going to make a final checklist and say, my to-do lists are all done. They're always going to be more stuff to do. So you're going to have to say, you know, I'm fulfilled. I'm a fulfilled person at some point. And that's got to be something that you just give yourself as a gift on an ongoing basis saying, yes, I am a fulfilled, happy me. So fulfilled, happy me, you got to figure out who that is. And you got to figure out some criteria to, to hit that. And, uh, and that's something I want you to feel on a regular basis. I want you to feel fulfilled, happy me. I want you to be fulfilled, happy me. I want you to make that role important to you and feel that role and be that role on a regular basis. So this is a extended brunch with Brian. We had a lot to go over today. Lots to go over with brunch with Brian today. Lots of roles, lots to talk about. And you guys put on the right costume, feel the role, get into your roles, pick your roles, name your roles today. Today is the day to name some cool roles. If you like the names I like, uh, and what are the names I like? Of course, I love Fulfilled Happy Me. Yes. And yes, I love Industrious Grateful Me. And whenever I even think, guys, you don't even have to build some big character. Now, you could write out a sheet, have a heading at the top of a sheet that says Industrious Grateful Me, and write out a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of stuff under it to help define your character. Now, listen, I have, if you want these, I have the role definition charts and that's how you can build these. And that's the next step in your role, in your role, uh, the role world. And, uh, I have a whole lot of training on this on role training. And so if you want to go further with that, I'm writing a book on this. So, uh, I can take you a lot further on this, but, uh, you should, you can start with the role definition charts. And if you want to create your role, more further and define your role for industrious grateful me you just write it on the top of the chart industrious grateful me on the top of the role definition chart and then there's plenty of things you can write including wardrobe or costume and habits and everything and so it's really cool and you can ask me if you guys want to 888 rich now you know that's our number or you can always get us at support at the wolfcouple.com and you can always ask for the role definition chart. So go ahead and shoot us an email if you want. Support at the Wolf Couple. Call us 888-RICH-NOW. Send us anything you want. Give you the role definition chart to go further on this, guys. But I'll always be talking about roles because roles really help you define your life and stay positive and happy. And so this was an awesome brunch with Brian talking about roles this morning. And I'm going to be, keep, be talking a lot more about it. And hopefully we can bring baseball back. Even if there's no fans in the stands, we can at least watch it. I think that would be doable, right, guys? I mean, the baseball players aren't that close to each other, and you could test them all. It wouldn't be that hard to get tests for all the baseball players and all the guys on one team, on those teams. So hopefully we can do something with that. Okay, so let's stay happy. Let's stay positive, guys. Let's start a new great week. This was a great new start to our week and understanding now. Remember, tomorrow, this is a really, this is the most important thing. I should have started with this. Tomorrow, everybody on this Brunch with Brian has got to be on tomorrow on Teaching Tuesdays. Remember, we're sort of preempting Teaching Tuesdays for a very special simulcast. And this is a simulcast, and we're doing our transaction engineer. We're going to make all of you guys into a role of transaction engineer in real estate investing. So we're going to make sure that you guys know what you're doing, and you can close all seven deals of real estate and no matter what comes down the pike and there and the wealth of deals are opening up right now, guys. So I want you to be able to close any kind of deals and know what's in your system. If you have the what to say and what to do system, I want to make sure that you know how to apply it effectively, no matter what deal is uh, confronting you or coming down the pike at you. So make sure that you're on that uh, session tomorrow. Again, that's uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. 4 p.m. Pacific time. Be with us tomorrow. We'll give you a link. It's the same time as our normal Teaching Tuesdays, and we'll probably 
Uh, so definitely get on that. It's a simulcast, so it's live. You're going to be able to see us, and it's going to be on Facebook Live and YouTube. Uh, usually people come and, and are on those one of those services. I believe we're going to be on other platforms too, but those are probably one of those two services you're going to be with us. So you're going to be with us tomorrow for sure at those times, um, and we'll see you then. Okay, awesome. Brunch with Brian. See you tomorrow.